I'm gonna drive this thing into the sunset. The automotive industry comes with automotive legends. Colin Chapman is arguably one of the most influential people in automotive history. He was an inventor, an engineer, and the founder of Lotus Cars. Simplify and add lightness. That was one of Colin Chapman's key motto. And under that philosophy, Lotus created some rather impressive lightweight machines. There was the Lotus 7 in 1957 and followed by the Lotus Elan in the 1960s, a very small and tiny machine that was rather capable around a track. But after winning a few Formula One races, Colin Chapman wanted to take the Italians on at their own game. Colin wanted a supercar. Colin Chapman really liked the Maserati boomerang concept that was unveiled at the 1972 Geneva Auto Show. That had been designed by Giorgetto Giugiaro. It was one of the first interpretation of the famous wedge design. Mr. Chapman wanted his supercar to look precisely like that. And suddenly, out of nowhere, the Lotus Esprit was born. When the original Esprit was presented at the Paris Auto Show in 1976, it blew the doors off of the competition. It looked like nothing else Lotus had created before. Remember, Lotus was known for mostly coupes, convertibles, and, well, Formula One cars. It had never made a supercar before. And it came out with this, a proper Giugiaro wedge design that looked like a Lamborghini or all the other Italian supercars that were on the market back in the day. Many will argue that this is Giugiaro's purest form of the wedge design, which later went on to designing the BMW M1 and the DeLorean DMC12. Now this is the S2 Lotus Esprit. It arrived in 1978. It's the second generation car. The goal was to fix some of the issues with the first generation vehicle, uh, like its uh, performance, because although this was a very lightweight car, um, it only developed 140 horsepower. Now, what Lotus tried to do was fiddle with the gear ratios to improve the acceleration and the top speed. It claimed in 1978 that this car could do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.8 seconds and reach a 222 kilometer an hour top speed. But when automotive journalists tested the car, it only did about a 9 second run to 0 to 100 kilometers an hour and barely reached a 200 kilometer an hour top speed. Nevertheless, I find this car to be absolutely gorgeous. It is really a very pure and simple design. I love the stance, I love the proportions. It appears like the car was sliced in half. Now it's painted in a period correct livery, a reference to the 1978 Formula One championship that Lotus won back in the day. And its main sponsor back in the day was John Players and Sons. So this is exactly the way this Lotus should be painted. So come with me, we're gonna go for a drive and we're gonna rediscover together the 1978 Lotus Esprit S2. Obviously this being a 1970s supercar it's not the most spacious cabin to be in. However, if I compare this to other supercars of its era, it's actually quite surprising. As you know, I'm not a small guy. Uh, getting inside, you know, was a bit of a contortionist act. Uh, but once I'm in the sports bucket seats, it's actually quite comfortable. Yes, my head is touching the ceiling, but I've got amazing visibility in this car. Um, the only thing I would have enjoyed with this vehicle is an adjustable steering wheel. This doesn't adjust, so I have it on my lap. This is typical of sports cars of this era. However, the pedals are super well placed. Uh, they're very tiny and they're close to each other. I've got a cool gear lever right here, a wooden knob gear lever here on my right. Now this is a Citroen based five speed manual transmission. And what's also impressive about this Lotus is the build quality. This was hand built back in the day and everything is very, very well put together. I'm quite impressed. Um, the build quality is good. The material quality is also excellent. I've got this big gauge cluster right in front of me with toggle switches everywhere for the lights. I got my climate control settings right here. Large analog gauges in my face. Now this was part of the update for the S2 in 1978. So now it's time to take this thing for a drive. I'm going to start this thing first so you can hear it. Here we go.
So in the case of the Lotus uh, Esprit S1 and S2, Colin Chapman's philosophy of lightness went a bit too far. The problem with this car is that, yeah, it was lightweight, it was super nimble, it handled tremendously well, but it didn't have an engine. The power plant was a measly two liter four cylinder that only developed 140 horsepower and 140 foot pounds of torque. It's only afterwards that the Lotus started getting turbocharging. The S3 had the turbo, then the engine was pumped up to 2.2 liters, and later on in the mid 1990s, there was the Esprit V8. So the problem with this thing is that it didn't really accelerate very fast. There's no point in flooring it, as you can see, it just makes a lot of noise. I mean, it, there's no, there's nothing particularly amazing about this torque curve. It doesn't kick in at a certain RPM. And when you pass 5,000 RPM, it doesn't really do anything except make a lot of noise. And there's not much that really happens. I mean, the torque curve in this thing is quite odd. Now, if you're wondering why the engine is yelling the way it is, <laughs> it's because I'm always accidentally hitting the clutch because the pedals, they're so tiny and they're so close to each other that it's not very easy to drive when you've got big feet such as myself. What I find impressive about this car is how modern it still feels, even by today's standards. The Esprit feels very light. It feels agile. There's no power steering. It's extremely direct. Every input is instantly applied to the drivetrain. I also love the ergonomics. I mean, yes, it's hard to get inside the car, but once you're sitting comfortably in these seats, I just want to stay here forever. There's great visibility in the front because the windshield is massive. The windows are big on the side. I have a nice big glass in the rear. Yes, I'm low to the ground. I kind of have to bend over to look at my rear view mirror. And the, and the side view mirrors are rather tiny, but it's not scary. I don't feel like I'm going to be trapped inside this car and die like you would in some Italian supercars of that era. It's on a road like this where you can really appreciate the Esprit S2 for what it is. It allows you to to escape in the art of driving, and this is absolutely wonderful. I'm also very impressed by the precision of this manual transmission. Now, this is the same transmission as in a Citroen SM, um, and it's actually quite precise. The cog en engagement is very good. Um, it just feels very modern. Um, I've driven modern sports cars that didn't feel disconnected as this 45-year-old Lotus. Try the acceleration again. I don't really want to push this thing because it doesn't have a lot of power and it just feels like a piece of automotive royalty. So you know what, I'm just going to enjoy this country road with it and just flow, flow in the marvelous engineering of the Lotus Esprit. And this is really what Colin Chapman wanted from this supercar. He wasn't about drag racing or 0 to 60 times, he was about driving. Uh, fun fact, this car has a cigarette lighter in each door and there's a cigarette ashtray at the bottom of each door. I can just imagine Colin walking into the factory, speaking to the person in charge of building the doors and asking him, hey you, you're doing the doors on my supercar, aren't you? Can you please put cigarette lighters? Interestingly, the, the Esprit kept on going all the way to 2004. There were so many different iterations of this car and Lotus kept on perfecting the design. It just got better year after year. Um, it got faster, it got more powerful. The styling was retweaked, especially in 1988, where it was designed by Peter Stevens, but somehow managed to keep the original wedge design. Oh man, this thing is fun. <laughs> this is a fun car. This is a fun car. I, I'm just so connected with the drivetrain, and I feel like I could drive this thing forever. And I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna drive this thing into the sunset. I'm gonna enjoy open road motoring the way Colin Chapman wanted us to do so. It's easy to dismiss the first generations of the Esprit for the fact that it had no power. And it's true, I mean, the Lotus Esprit only began to become a respectful supercar during the mid-90s where it started making actual power. The early 1990s model with the charged cool turbocharged 2.2 liter engine made 264 horsepower it kept going up afterwards all the way to the 350 horsepower twin turbo v8 model but as the esprit got older it also got fatter which meant it was moving itself further and further away from colin chapman's original philosophy of adding lightness and simplifying the machine only the Lotus Elise, which arrived in the late 1990s, resurrected that concept. So when you think about it, even if the first generations of the Esprit, the S1 and this absolutely beautiful S2, 
didn't have a lot of power under the hood, they were the purest form of Colin Chapman's dream of building a proper British lightweight supercar. <laughs> You're filming this? Stop, stop. 